Hi everyone, welcome back to Falcon's House. This is my PFSense and other router OS install video. I'm going to kind of talk about my experience with doing the installs, issues that I ran into, that sort of thing. The first router OS that I tried was PFSense. This is probably the most famous software router OS that exists. It is very popular, it's used, I mean, they, they, they claim that it is an enterprise product. I don't really know if it's an enterprise product, but it's definitely a small, medium business product, kind of designed around preventing as much access as possible. And while it can be used in a home setting, and it is what I'm currently using, that it does have some limitations that I'll get into in a little bit. So I did have to change some bio settings on the Optiplex in order to get the OS to install. I had to disable secure boot in order for it to even try to boot from the USB stick for it. And then I also had to turn off the UEFI mode in the BIOS and otherwise it would just boot to a screen. It was like trying to boot from UEFI and it just couldn't do it. But once I turned that off, then it was able to do the install and the install was Pretty straightforward, completely text-based, well not text, but like textual installer, not a graphical installer kind of setup. And I chose the option to do install on ZFS. I do think this is overkill for a home setup, and especially with only one drive in the system, there's not really that many benefits to ZFS without a mirror or something above that where it's distributing load and doing self-healing across and being able to do checksums or all that sort of thing. But it is better than nothing. It is better than other file systems. It's what I use in my storage server and everything else as well. But that install part went smooth. I was able, it gives you a default IP address. You're able to configure it and change it. One of the problems that I had when I did my other testing is the fact that I didn't have a monitor that I could use on the system in the room where my modem and my access point were. So what I basically had to do was do all the setup, pre-configure it in a different room, then power it off, plug it back in, set, plug all the network connections in and boot it up, and hope that I could access the web interface. The, I actually had this problem when I was testing IP Fire, is that I couldn't get it to do this. Like, I could do the install, I'd move it to the other room, and no matter what NIC port I used, I could not get it to bring up the web interface. So I ended up just giving up on that one. So as much as I, like, I, but I think that is a me issue and not a general issue with IP Fire. I think if I had a, had a monitor in that room with everything connected, I would have been able to see what the error was or why it wasn't connecting and it have solved it and done all the rest of my testing. But I didn't feel like it was that important to test because I wasn't hitting limitations on my current internet speed. Of, well, now it's 150 down and 10 up. They just increased it from 100 down and 10 up in the last two weeks. So without a new plan, they just increased the plan speeds. Eventually I'm gonna move to gigabit and that might we might see more things and more testing need to be done there. But right now I'm using very low resources and so testing a different platform wasn't going to matter that much. So the PFSense install was very nice, very easy outside of having to change a few settings in the BIOS. And I also tested OpenSense, OpenWRT, and Untangle. And obviously I attempted to do IP Fire like I just mentioned, but that didn't quite work out the way that I had planned. And so we ended up, I ended up just having to move on from that. OpenSense is a fork of PFSense that's open source, and they split about four years ago. But for the most part, I found, like, performance was very similar, the features were basically identical. The only thing that I really had to do differently was it had a different user interface. And the install went just as smoothly, and I didn't really have any problems. But I liked the layout of PFSense better, so I was going to stick with PFSense over it. Untangle is the product that I expected to use in the end, but like I said, I'm still on PFSense. And the install was very easy, 
it's probably even easier than PF Senses install because they like they walk you through a lot more steps of how do you want to configure it and they show you diagrams. But because of that, in order to show you all that information, it is a graphical install. And so and it uses a browser based tool to do it. So you can't just tab around and use the keyboard like I'd like for that kind of install. So I actually had to go out and buy an $8 mouse from the store in order to be able to complete the install and get the basic configuration going to be able to use it. So, I mean, most people are going to have a mouse available. I just didn't want to like get behind my current system, which is against a wall and all this other stuff in order to unplug my mouse and then have to plug it back in. And so I would say if you're doing that, you don't have an extra mouse, you might plan on that and just buy something really cheap just to do the install and do whatever so you don't have to worry about getting everything configured very difficultly without that. I guess there is a way if you pay for their paid service, you can do a, a zero configuration where you have a configuration file preset on there and it reads that and sets everything. But I'm just using the free version to test and it's not available for that. But I did like the fact that it did and a lot more handholding features like installing antivirus and adblock were a couple clicks to get everything and they pre-installed everything whereas with pfsense and openwrt you're having to install packages and configure them to get everything to work properly untangle is smooth it is very much it's a very nice looking user interface maybe not quite to ubiquity's level but definitely a lot closer to the level that you would expect for that Rather, PF Senses is fine, and then OpenWRTs is like very, very basic level stuff. But it look and IP Fires is looks like it's out of the '90s. So, in comparison, it looks very nice. It installed smoothly. One of the problems I had though was it wasn't very obvious where the save button is. It's just a tiny little button in the corner of every screen. It's not very obvious. They don't give you a pop up and are like. You made a change. Do you want to save? It'll just be like you have you have unsaved changes and you have to kind of figure it out. And some screens it was in a different location or you had a, it just said apply instead of save. And the other problem I had, this mostly happened in Chrome and not in Firefox, was I would get Java exceptions and it just wouldn't save. And I'd have to hit back and I'd have to re-enter my changes and then redo it. But once I changed to Firefox, these mostly went away. There's still a couple times where I had Java errors. But I don't know if that's just the new version or if it's just me. I'm not sure. But it wasn't quite perfect for me. And the other thing was, while it allowed me to set all the buffer bloat quality of service and smart queue settings, it didn't give me the fine tuning ability to quite get the same performance that I was getting out of PFSense. And the base system used more resources like it was 20% of my CPU resources and 25% of the memory instead of something like 2 to 3% of the CPU resources and 10% of the memory it seemed to just want more resources at the baseline level even though everything installed very well and i think there's going to be more details when i'm going to talk about some of the problems of pfsense kind of like what battle nonsense on his channel had talked about where pfsense doesn't do um, universal plug and play properly like it kind of works but it doesn't like doing it to two of similar devices so if you're trying to play the same game on multiple consoles or multiple PCs at once it doesn't know how to forward the ports and Untangle does do that properly so if you have that kind of setup you're probably going to choose Untangle over PFSense regardless but for me that didn't matter so I stuck with PFSense the next one I tested was OpenWRT, and it is probably the most unique of the options as it was mostly designed to be replacement firmware on standalone routers from Linksys or Netgear or whatever. But I do have an x86 version that you can install and run it on normal PC hardware just like I was doing the other ones. The problem is, is there's two versions and it's not very clear on what version you need. The first version I tested did not have drivers for my Intel NIC, and so I messed around trying to install drivers manually, and then I found out there was a different version that already had them installed and allowed me to do that. 
The one benefit OpenWRT has is that it supports a newer quality of service model called Cake versus where everything else is using FQ Coddle and that's it. So the performance of Cake is better than FQ Coddle by a small amount, but it is noticeable. And that's why all the other ones kind of perform similarly. So my testing is more about the install and user interface and everything else and then performance than I wanted. But so OpenWRT, because of its design, min, design as a replacement firmware, it does not have a normal installer. It's just an image file that you stick on a USB stick and you boot to that and you do your configuration to the web interface and you can't really modify the default IP address. So I had to change some other settings. I had to change my access points IP address because it tried to take the same default IP. But once you get to that point, it really isn't that hard to configure and you could end up saving money by not having to buy a solid state drive to use OpenWRT because everything would run off the USB stick. So it kind of is, I wanted the SSD though because I wanted to be able to do logging and things like that. So, and you could install it on one, you would just have to use, you'd have to have the SSD in the system and use Linux and use the dd command to copy the image that way to it and expand the image file size it's possible it's just not the ideal configuration for it and it definitely is a lot more technical to do that because at some of those things are going to be full command line and not a nice graphical interface but it did great great performance however the one downside is universal plug and play doesn't work at all so you have to manually port forward and you end up with the same situation that PFSense had where you don't have like the proper port forwarding to multiple devices. So once again, really untangles the only option that I tested that works properly with that. But if you don't need that feature, you can kind of be chose kind of be torn between OpenWRT and PFSense depending on exactly what you want. So those are the experiences I had with installing the various router OSs and in the next few videos, I'll cover each one of them more in depth. Probably just untangle OpenWRT and PFSense, but I'm going to talk about performance and some of the other things I found and the features and maybe help you make a decision about one, wanting to do this project and two, what kind of performance benefits you could see from the project. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.